Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeurs and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God His Son not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home a joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Amen. Let's go to God together in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day and for this point in our life, Father. For in the past You have fashioned us, Father, in our mother's womb. You have created us, Father. And You had a plan for us, Father, before the foundation of the earth. We ask, Father, that you may be merciful and gracious toward us, Father, as we are thankful, Father, to your name and to the sacrifice that your Son has done, Father, for us on the cross. Father, we pray that you may guide us into all righteousness and remove all unrighteousness from us. Guide us in the past, Father, that lead into everlasting life. We pray, Father, that you may continue to lead us, Father, here at this congregation, lead the youth, Father, lead those that are elder. Father, we pray that we may have a respect unto your ways, Father, and that we may read your laws and be attentive, to, Father, to what you desire for us to do. We thank you for all your blessings, Father, that you've given us. Yes. We ask that you may give us great health, Father, and that you may give us long life on earth. We pray, Father, that you may extend uh, your mercy toward us 
and uh, strengthen us, Father, that we may overcome all these arrows, Father, that the wicked one has prepared, that we may use the shield, Father, to, to uh, remove them, Father, from them piercing us, Father, in any way where we will be wounded, Father. We pray that you may guide us, Father, in the areas, Father, that you have seen and that you have created, Father, in the Word of God. Yes. We ask, Father, that you may ask that those that have strayed away from the path, Father, that they may return, even this night, that they may remember the commitment that they made in baptism, that the seal that you gave them, Father, may be removed, Father, by your power, if they do not come back and repent, Father. We ask, Father, that you may awaken those up and awaken the saints, Father, with zeal, that they may continue to seek after you, Father, with the whole heart and not be overwhelmed by the things of this earth, yes. by the things of this flesh, but always have a spiritual mindset and always have a hope of your promises. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you would turn your Bibles to Psalm 119, uh, we'll be reading verses 9 through 16. Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of my mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as, as, much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Let's go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, I'd like to say thank you for allowing us to be here to remember you once again. <coughs> Um, I ask that I want to pray for those who are sick and shut in, uh, such as brother uh, brother Jefferson and all of those others who I may be forgetting right now. I ask that you please watch over us, watch over those who may be traveling here right now. And I ask that you just continue to be with us in this treacherous life. Thank you for everything that you've done, each and every blessing that you've laid upon us. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, Saints. Good evening. Blessing to see you all today. Amen. Good to be here. Uh, would you turn your hymns, give me your, your, your uh, Bibles to Psalms, Psalms 1, the very first Psalm, the very first Psalm. And it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But he delight in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaves also shall be, shall not wither, or whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. 
For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his word. Give the hymn book. Hymn 4.37 Before we have a prayer Hymn 4.37 I'm sorry, just go to 455. 455. I live in glory. 455. Do you have it? I like to stay here longer than men's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven way. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love stories there on high. There with my dear Redeemer and no more to die. Oh yes, I live in glory, by and by. I want to be a service along this pilgrim way, and lead the lost to Jesus, as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep Him ever nigh. And live with Him forever, in glory by and by. Oh yes, I live in glory, by and by. I'll tell and sing the story, there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there's no more to die. Oh yes, I live in glory, by and by. The end I know is near, and by faith I look away. To yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. I cling to Him forever, and look beyond the sky. And die in the sages, glory by and by. Yes, I live in glory, by and by. I'll tell and sing the story, there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there's no more to die. Oh yes, I live in glory, by and by. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? <clears throat> Merciful and kind, wise Heavenly Father, gracious Father, we come thanking you for this day, dear Father, giving us health and strength, dear Father, watching over us and protecting us, Father, this day, Father, from yes. hurt, harm, and danger, Father. We're grateful, Father, and we continue, Father, to ask for your mercy yes. and grace in our lives, dear Father. We're so thankful for so much, Father, that you do for us, dear yes. God. You just cannot say enough, dear Father, how much we, we love you and respect you, and we want to continue to serve you, Father, to do what is right uh, before all in this life, dear Father. Yes, Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for this congregation. We thank you for the hard-working members here, dear Father, who yes. uh, do things that are incredible, dear Father, to glorify your name. We've had VBS this past week, Father, which was so very successful, dear Father. Uh, people were glorified. You were glorified. And, yes. and, that, and those who uh, did your work, Father, need not be named, Father. They're, they're just so grateful to be in your vineyard working, dear Father. And we're grateful for them all, dear Father. We. We have sick among us, Father. We're grateful for Brother Jerry. Uh, yes. Jerry, our elder here, Father, who's made it back home, dear Father. We thank yes. you for his loving wife. Who took, care, who took care of him, Father. He's 
got home speedily this time, uh, more than at last. Yeah. And we're grateful for that, Father. We pray for our sister as well, Carol White, their father, who uh, is in much pain, Father. She's going through some difficult times, Father. We yeah. pray that you would uh, fix, help her to fix her body, dear Father, as she uh, goes to recover, Father, to learn the process of using a, 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 a lower limbs. Uh, once again, Father, we pray that you continue to be with her and her son, Anwar, as well, dear Father. We just come praying for Sister Sister Parkin here, uh, Sister Newman, to be with her father as well. Yes. Dear Father, we pray for the, the many members, Father, who don't stand all the time and need prayer, Father. We just continue to ask you to be with each and every family here, dear Father. We, we're praying for protection, Father, for all those who are not here this week, may be traveling these final days before school starts, dear Father. We pray that the travels might be safe, that they make it back, that they might make it back home, dear Father. And dear Father, I am grateful, dear Father, for uh, my wife's family, Father, that uh, you were glorified in the death of Charles Mathis Wright, dear Father, that, that someone might come to the gospel, Father, for hearing the truth, Father, and so grateful for the Fifth Ward Church of Christ as well, dear Father, who opened their doors. Brother Gary Smith did an excellent job. We're grateful for him for helping uh, in that endeavor as well, dear Father. We're just so thankful, Father, for, for all that you do, Father. We ask that you continue to help us here in this, at this particular place, Father, to continue to Look, look, look for that day when we will be able to leave here, Father, and to walk into a new building. We continue to ask you to bless those who uh, oversee this place, dear Father, that there will continue to help us to stay here and to do what we need to do, Father, as we're here to glorify your name, Father, and to uh, execute the plan that we had before us, dear Father. We're so grateful, and we hope that you crown the, the, the head of and crown the head of the one who will come with wisdom and knowledge, Father, and break unto us the bread of life tonight dear father this is our prayer as we give thanks father in jesus name amen amen it's good to see those that have taken the time out to uh be with us to honor almighty god and it's good to see brother and sister henson uh, have made it back safely and uh, we're so grateful uh, the Lord heard our prayer to bring them back in uh, to the fold. Uh, if you uh, have your uh, song book I uh, want to sing uh, one more song before we go into uh, our particular uh, lesson and uh, we want to uh, sing if you have 252. Uh, 252. 252, forgive me. 253. 253. Redeem. Redeem. Sing all three verses. 253. If you have it, let us sing. Sweet is the song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow have vanished away. I have been, I have been redeemed. I am redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. Christ is mine. All to Him I now reside. I have been, I have been redeemed. Great is my joy. Now as on but I go, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, all the way homeward, my praises shall flow, I have been, I have been redeemed, I'm redeemed, by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. 
Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. Precious indeed is my Savior to me. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Happy in glory. Someday I shall be. I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. Christ is mine. All to Him I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Job chapter 1. I wanted to select another song uh, because this is our prayer and praise and uh, worship version to the Lord. And we want to give you something that can show you how blessed you are as well as myself and anyone listening. But we also want to remind you with that song how you have already been rescued and redeemed from the bowels of hell. That's where we should be placed, saints, but God has redeemed us. And we should have the same type of mentality that Job has in Job's first chapter. And it should be understood that nobody wants to suffer, saints. But we have to understand is that this is a human being like you and I. He's not Jesus. He's not an angel. He is a holy man. It doesn't label him a great prophet as Isaiah. But he is a believer. And so verse 1 says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. One that feared God and eschewed evil. Now perfect, don't get excited because we're perfect too. Jesus told us to be perfect as a, the Father is perfect. To be complete. And the idea is that this does not mean Job is not sin. But Job is the type of brother who will adjust his life and move forward. Verse 2, And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Now I let you know of the east. Now you got men who are great in the north, south, and west, but he's the great in the east. Uh, well, We're going to learn that Job is a powerful man he is a great man of the entire earth of all the believers. Verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. So they, they're a family oriented group. They love each other. And I'll call the sisters over there. Tell them come on over. We're going to have a good time together. And it was so when the days of their feasting was gone about. That Job sent and sanctified them. And rose up early in the morning. And offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. But Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their house. Thus did Job continue. Job's the type of man to think about his family. You know, I know how they get together. Uh, you know, they, they might have got angry with the Lord about something full of, full of a little of that wine. And I'm going to ask God to be merciful to have grace. And you got to think about, do you do that for your family, your children, no matter where they at? In a different land, pray for them, think about, you know, pray for them, you know, uh, it's a time of year, you know, I know the business slows down for him. he might be a little angry about it, hope he don't say nothing crazy, I'm going to pray. That's how we should do, to remember those that we love, especially those that are under our care as children, because these are grown folks, they're having a party, they're inviting their sisters over, but the idea is that grown folks sin too. They're still your children. So we have to remember that. Say, well, I've raised the nine out the house. No, it don't work like that. So the thought and the theme of this particular lesson is, before we get too further into it, it's not going to be very long, is the faith 
of God never dies. The faith of God never dies. And what I mean by that is not how God believes, but the God-like faith, the faith that we have that God has cultivated and nurtured in our lives through great Bible teachers, loved ones, praying for us, that faith, that kind of faith, saints, never dies. If you hold on to that type of faith, then we will be like Job. Verse 6 says, uh, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down. And we just had a wonderful VBS. God bless y'all for participation. We're talking about that lion. That's how lion is. Lion walks around. It was time to eat. He's, he's antsy. I got to find me something to eat. I'm hungry. Big lion. Got to eat a big meal. And he's looking for whatever is weak. And he has run across Job. But he can't get his paws on him. And so he says, verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and is sure thief. Now I want to point out something. Job is the richest in the east, not in the world. But Job has the greatest of spiritual reputation in the world. You see the different saints? They say, well, he had a lot of stuff. No, 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 but he's not the richest in the world. It says in the east. Then the east is not the whole world. But he has the greatest faith, uprightness, holiness, and strength about him. You don't have to have all the money to be rich in faith. Amen. The faith of God. And brethren, it's kind of cool and it's nice and lights are on. Seats are comfortable. We rode in cars, not stinky animals. And the idea is that it's easy to kind of sit back here and say things. But in actuality, it's really not when you search your heart. So don't discredit yourself because you know some of the things that tomorrow holds. And what tomorrow holds that you don't know. You have no idea. Our bodies feel good right now. But we might be getting a phone call in the morning. Ozan's died. Pray for us. I'm not wishing. I'm just saying. Because you never know when the Lord says, okay, come on in. But the idea is that if you have faith and understand, you don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. And you can't, saints, because it shows you don't have faith. And so Job isn't worried when he goes and prays. What Job does is he's concerned that his children may not be walking upright. So I was proud. That's not word. That's not faithlessness. That's faith. He has faith that God will protect them and give them grace and time to get it right. And so Satan has is, is been looking around. God says, what about Job? You know, this guy hates evil. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job feel God for not? And see, I understand. Now we learned there's an interchange. It isn't that God and the devil are friends. No, that the sons of God presented themselves. Angelic hosts are coming. The standing. Because there's definitely not no earthly thing. Because Satan is not a fleshly body. And Satan come up there. See, he knows when I go up there and talk to him about something. Not in a friendly conversation. I'm going to tell him, you know, what's going on? You know? I want to have some opportunities with Job. He says, he don't feed for nothing. Hast thou not made in hedge, verse 10, about and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increasing land. Who is the devil hunting down? He's not going after the kings of the earth right now. He's not going after the three other guys, if there's such a thing. The north, yes. south, and the west fellas are the ladies. He's going for the big dog who is spiritually a Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got muscles everywhere. He know he has been watching Job. He's been getting reports and he has personally went to God to request a, a trial with Job, a testing. Because you know, man, this guy here, that look, man, he got to get he blocked over here. Children living good. You know, he's making sacrifice for him. Oh my goodness, this is too sweet. I want to get my hands on him. I can't get my hands on him. He said, but put forth thy hand, now verse 11, touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to the face. That verse 11, if you ever want to know what malice is, that's malice. For no reason, I'll make up something against someone. And God's going to say in the second chapter that Job has kept his integrity, although you move my heart against him, my hand, so to speak, against him. 
See, God is communicating to the devil. So, you know, you move me against him. But God already knows what's going on. But remember, the devil don't know what's going on. The devil is actually trying to move God against Job. See, brethren, just like the world thinks that God can't see them at night, no matter how smart the devil is, he's a super, S-U-P-R, a super fool also. Remember that. Because he is beside himself. He reached the point where he's already said in Isaiah, I'm going to be like God. Now, you know you're a fool. No. So now, you, you think when you know, well, no, he just, no, he thinks he going to be like God. So don't never make this fool, the devil, so powerful in your mind. You, who the devil going to get him? Don't do like that. He's too stupid to get you unless you get in his lane. And get to deal with, strike a few deals, yes. play a couple of games of poker with him, spiritual poker, and you run out of chips, and now he got you. Stay away from him. And so he says here, and the Lord said, I say, Behold, all that he has in our power, only upon himself, put not forth the hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now I want you to notice something. When the devil comes to try to attack you, Whatever God tell him, don't do, watch his fear of God. He didn't say you can't touch him. He said, don't. Brother Lawrence, remember this. The devil knows that he's loose for a season. He's marked. He go into the pit. But the devil also has seen some things. And he has seen people lit up, nations destroyed, the earth move, shaken, boiling over. He seen a war in heaven where he got whooped so fast he felt like life. And the devil know when the Lord says something, don't touch him. He knows, okay. See, now he didn't say I'm going to stop. He said, don't. That's a lesson for you and I to understand, brethren. Why is the devil so scared of God and we not? <laughs> you got a wife. Don't touch this one. Why are we not afraid? Something wrong with us. This is my doctrine. Don't touch another one. But he tells him, don't put your hand on him. And he don't touch Job. We should be able to learn God is so awesomely destructive that the devil was scared to put his hand on so much as a hair of Job. That needs to be tight fear you and I. Remember what James said. The devils tremble. Why are we scared? God get up and have his wife baptized. Why are we not scared? You're dealing with some demon possessed hellions in the church of Christ. And we better understand what we're dealing with. And don't say, oh, these brothers shot. Some of these brothers and these sisters are in a position that they'll make you wonder, my goodness, is the devil actually in that one? It's got a lot of demonic strength. Because this demon, this snake of the earth is told, don't touch him, and he doesn't. That's, we need to understand, there's a reason those demons tremble. But see, we have not seen the destructiveness that God, the destructive power of God, only in reading. But if you place your mind into this scene of destruction, how God killed Uzzah just for touching that ark, trying to do a good thing, Brethren, beware and be very afraid because God is not playing. And so therefore, we see as we get ready to wind this up, we see, verse 13, And that was the day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their eldest brother's house. Still the family atmosphere is here. Verse 14, And there came a messenger unto Joseph, said, The oxen were plowed, and the asses feeding beside them, and the sabins, and some bad boys fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants at the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped alone to tell thee the bad news. I'm just, I bring you bad. That's, that's all the way. Lord, let me just to bring the bad news. The devil say, let that one go. So he can bring the bad news. Verse number 16. While he was yet speaking, that came on son and said, the fire of God is from heaven. Whoa, wait a minute. Now, now you know he really got the job. Fire from heaven? Wait a minute. I'll shake your mind up. Make you think, well, God is against me. Fire from heaven, not hell. Heaven. And the, he says, and had burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and all our 
only am escaped all along to tell thee. They'll say, let that one go. <laughs> go tell it. Verse 17, while he was yet speaking, there came also another said, the child is made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servant of the angel. So, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee, my goodness, another one let go just to bring bad news at 11. That's pitiful. Verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and our daughters were eating and drinking while in their eldest brother's house. Oh, it's finna get real close to home now. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. Now, the wind, that sounds like some God would do. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Did you see that? Children wiped out. Verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshiped. Not cursed. Not howl. Not angry. Major disappointment. One news report after the next. People you love, servants. Then it gets to the family, the children. He said, naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. Brethren, the faith of God never dies. When you have the faith that God is intended for you and I to have. Brethren, it doesn't matter what bad news comes. Nobody likes it. I don't know of any saint that will go, oh, bad news coming today that I may glorify the Lord. No. Nobody. It happens unexpected. Crazy things. Car running to your garage out of all the houses, down the house, it hit your house. To your garage. And your insurance don't cover it. Oh my. Oh, ouch. Neighbors sending letters. Home association. Can you fix your garage, please? More trouble. Animals running in there. Somebody might break in. Bar it all up. Just one thing after the next. Whatever it is, just is compiled. And you have to stop and say, man, go to the hospital. One relative sick. Another relative sick. I remember one time, both of my children were in the hospital. With a very grievous infection that the doctors were puzzled about. A flesh eating infection. And they were in the same room side by side. Two different rooms. Both of them. It's amazing. And then you stop and your mind thinks. My goodness. This could be the end. But. If you have the faith of God. You know. Lord it's in your hand. It's in your hand. It's up to you. You have to remember this man's strength and power. And understand, this is to glorify God. Only God can cultivate a faith in you like this. You, you can't do it. God has to cultivate it through lessons, life experiences, trials, tribulations. Lifting you up when you thought it was over. Time after time again. And then a big mega tornado hits. And then now you're ready to go. The Lord gave it to me. He can take away. And others look at you as if you are a madman. The woman is surely drunk. But this type of faith does not die. Doesn't. And saints, what you and I have to recognize is. Don't look at Job like he's the last. You can be Job too. Amen. I can be Job. Anybody can be Job in the situation given to you. But the idea is that sometimes we're not prepared our fault and we slip. After you do that, you have to start to reach one and say, okay, now, nah, okay, now, nah, this thing ain't going to come back again because this fool the devil, he's not going to stop. He got demons on around the clock working. So, I'm going to be prepared next time. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know the fool bringing something. I'm going to remember, okay, okay, it's game time. 
and I'm going to give God the glory Amen. and honor and praise that He is supposed to have been getting from and what I should have gave last time when I sipped Amen. at that last challenge. And brethren, don't expect everybody around you to understand. They may say, man, I knew you was crazy. I knew you was crazy. I can't believe. You know, you, you, you going to church after all that happened tonight? You going to church? Look at you crazy. Look at you crazy. You just came from a funeral? You just came from a funeral? Your mama died. You fixing to go to Bible study? Just walk on out and say, yep, yeah, you going to start the car. Because you already know that's a source of strength. That's where I'm gonna pull from. That's where I'm gonna pull from. And the reason being is because you have to honor and glorify God to give Him praise, like Job did. You just got out the hospital. I know they say you okay, but you got you're trying to go to church. My legs will move me that I'm going. Amen. To thank and glorify and thank and thank for praying. People have to understand what this thing is about. It's not about well, how many houses did you buy, how many cars you have, how many buildings you build, how many businesses you have, how many children you have. It's about did you have the type of faith that did not die while you're on earth. Because I'm telling you, if you die while you're on the earth, it's not going to be available when you stand before the judge. And you will have no confidence at all that God will receive. Brother, when we walk to the judgment, we have to have faith that we can walk bold. Do you know who God is? He's gonna walk bold. You so how many of us will walk bold to the president? Walk right to the president. How are you doing, Trump? How are you doing, President Trump? How are you doing, President Bush? Just walk right in. All kind of secrets. Do you understand? You're going to walk to God before the throne. Like you and he, our son, our daughter, and father. Amen. That's power. And only God can give you that. And it's not going to be because you don't respect him. It's going to be because you love him. And he loves you. And he's wanting you to come. He's been waiting to see you all this time. And now the reunion begins. Places you in paradise to rest comfortably. You got to go to jail because we got to do it right. And then you get your reward. The Lord, His Son, will come and open it up. Take us to help. If you believe that, do you want to be saved right now? Do you want to be placed in an environment like that? Well, you got to believe Jesus died, was buried on the third day, rose again. If you believe that, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, the Lord will save your soul right now. If you get baptized, if anyone here needs to be baptized, if you're listening to the message, don't pray because when you die, it's over. Game over. For eternity. You know, eternity is too long and hell is too hot to go there. Amen. Jesus said, He that believes in the baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be down. Mark 16 and 16. And Acts 2 and 37, they say, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 30, He said, Change. Got to change in the heart and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said the promises of you, your children, all that all fall, even as many as the Lord of God shall call. And with many other words, he testified, he encouraged them. Save yourself. Why? Because you're lost from this untoward generation. 3,000, they didn't get mad. Man, we came all the way from Egypt. And they talked about we lost them fools crazy. They didn't say that. They thank God got baptized. 3,000 said we're ready. They continued in the apostles' doctrine, a new doctrine. The fellowship, a different type of fellowship where you don't have to go Amen. to Jerusalem. And the breaking of bread, different. No bitter, no lamb. Just bread and fruit of the vine. Amen. And prayers, a different prayer. Different type of prayer in the sense of we're asking something else. No longer hoping that the kingdom will come because it's already here. We understand Amen. that. And the Lord, Acts 2, 47, added to the church daily such should be saved. In Acts chapter 8, the eunuch has joy. He's a eunuch. He's, he's not a real Jew. He's come. He's been a proselyte. He, and he's reading, he can't understand. Philip tells him what's going on. He don't go, man, I don't roll all the way. Look at man, I, I, I perfectly calm and happy within my Jewish belief system. He didn't say that. He said, see, here's what I want the me to be baptized. He said, if you believe it all hard, you're made. He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he go, you mean to tell me, my, you trying to tell me my grandmama going to go to hell? My Ethiopian grandmama, she believed to know. He said, okay, got baptized. You believe that? The scriptures are clear. 
Paul says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body with a Jew, a Gentile, bond, and free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Peter says it say, 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the like figure, well, even baptism now, not no thief on the cross, saves us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By the resurrection, Jesus Christ was going to heaven. Angels, authorities, and power subject unto him. Jesus himself, this great redeemer that we sung about, that gives us the faith and joy like Job had. He says, Revelation 2.10, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Tribulation, 10 days. He says, Be thou faithful unto death, and you will have everlasting life. What did Job hold on to? Faith. Did not curse God in chapter 2. In fact, said, curse God and die. So you speak as a foolish woman. He corrected all amidst all his trauma. And now he's sick. Family gone. Members have died. But he still holds on. That's how we got to be saints. You can be that way. If you need to get baptized. If you need to ask for forgiveness. Whatever you need. Come out together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. And tenderly Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portal, he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me.